Hello, good afternoon, everybody. Um, so my name is Jungun Park. Um, I mean, not, I'm not representing any company. Um, this project is a very small project I was doing with the five computer science class people. Um, I'm an internist by training and clinical informatics fellow. Uh, this is a new ACGM fellowship, like cardiology, cardiology and nephrology, which is quite new for um, training for doctors. Um, so I made a title as knowledge-based lab interpretation um, for providers. So if you say lab interpretation, it sounds very um, mundane and common. But when I put the name knowledge-based, I mean I want to provide the right pieces of knowledge at the point of care rather than providing the explicit decisions or the list of differential diagnosis. Um, so I'll give you a small background of why we started this. So Georgia Tech has health informatics class. So they are looking for external mentors for their smart on fire app development. Um, so I agreed. Um, they have no idea what to do. So I gave them a proposal regarding the potential project we might able to do together. So they took it. So they how we started. Um, so one of the motivation why we started this is, uh, I mean, I'm telling you doctors hate EHL. Because the EHL system, when you interact with the system, you kind of um, get a feeling that you're working with somebody who doesn't trust you. Um, they are designed to um, distrust doctors. It's kind of um, feeling that you're shopping at Amazon and then their app is asking you to do something um, or asking not to do something. Or if you do something, you should justify by typing. And then you just feel like um, doing more of a clockwork rather than doing something, making your own judgment. So before we are making our decisions about what to do, um, I just want to share what we learned in the process because there apps I found in Smart App Gallery probably does not represent the best apps out there which has been presented here. Um, what I found is that a lot of apps are about visualization of complex data. And then another, a lot of apps are about calculation and risk estimation. Um, there are three or four SCVD cardiac tenure risk scoring and then I was take a look at it. Actually, it was built by Cerner, I found. Um, it was a little bit tricky uh, because what I found is that it very often happens that most of the data are not available from the EHL. For instance, gender, probably available. Age is fine. And presence of diabetes and current smoking and treatment of hypertension, they might be available from the EHL data, but they might not. And systolic blood pressure, there are multiple measures. You don't really know what the, which one to put in. So you end up with like almost half of the variables you should put in manually, um, kind of diminishing their value of making it into smart on fire app for providers. Because there are great independent calculator apps like EBM Calc, which is presented, or um, there are web-based calculators built by American College of Cardiology, kind of even telling you nice guidelines based on the calculations. Um, so what I feel is that it's not like you can make any apps better making uh, with Smart on Fire because major benefit of Smart on Fire clinical apps must be the reduced manual data entry from clinicians. Um, and then it depends on, it dep the value it depends because there are a lot of calculations completely does not depend on any EHL data. Um, for instance, a lot of calculation like this, one of variables that whether INL is levile, there's no way to define that. Um, alcohol use is hard to define. There was any predisposition to bleeding. It's very up to doctor's subjective decision. So even getting to psychiatry is even more complicated, whether there was adequate trial of SSLI, whether you tried this medication, whether the patient didn't like it, and then all of this 
variables combined, the clinicians make decisions. Like, so it's not only EHL data. There are some data doctors need to obtain to make decisions, like history of aspirin use, whether they're current smoking, doctors plan, whether they're planning to do certain kind of surgery, what's their goal, what they think in their mind in, by clinicians, whether the patient looks dehydrated, because the patient looks dehydrated, you might want to suggest some um, hydration with uh, fluid administration. Um, this is not really rocket science graph, it's uh, out of my imagination, is that um, because deploying, developing, and then negotiating vendors, regulation, everything dealing with for fire is not free. So um, if the benefit is enough to justify the development, probably the target is worth pursuing. Um, so this is our plan, our lessons learned. Um, we decide not to make any duplication with the native function of EHL. Um, the requirement for the additional data entry from the clinicians should be minimal so that we can having real-time access to their each of that data fully taking advantage of it. So we get back to labs because, well, labs are pretty much, we don't really have anything else. We don't need anything else than labs. And then liver function tests we focus on is a little bit interesting because unlike to all the labs, like lipid level, there's no decision-making guidelines for specific labs. For instance, if you are taking a look at air level function, I mean, lipid panel, um, there are certain guidelines, like if their LDL is over 200, you are gonna start statin, things like that. For the liver function test, there's nothing like that. If you look at the guidelines, it's just full of may, might, things like that. If the AST is the higher than IALT, you might think about this, if the ratio and this and this, and then maybe, there's a little bit more possibility to, of this disease. This is just full of something like that. Um, so how we deliver labs to the clinicians, and then my thinking is that it shouldn't be like this. This is uh, one of the smart apps for patients, not for providers. This looks awesome um, for patients, um, very pretty. But clinicians don't really need visualization like this, obviously, because we don't really need their, like, it's a little bit even more confusing, those typical tables, and we don't need the drawing of the patient jogging. And, and then if you look at a clinical guidelines, actually this is from up to date, um, their clinical knowledge pieces looks very oper operationalizable. For instance, their guidelines suggest that if the AST is in the high ALT, AST is the higher than ALT, you might think about alcoholic liver disease. Um, if but ASD is typically less than eight times the upper normal limits. Um, acute to viral hepatitis, um, it often happens that ASD and ALT is higher than 25 times of upper normal limits, although they are not making final decision regarding differential diagnosis or action plan. There are some operationalizable element in this knowledge pieces. So I'll skip this part, I'll skip this part. So let me clarify my, our aims. Um, we tried to offer evidence-based interpretation app labs at the point of care. What we're trying to offer is that more about offering comprehensive ideas based on clinical knowledge rather than giving explicit recommendation or giving them specific number, like 55% chance of having viral hepatitis. We don't really care much about them, just uh, collecting what they need to know at the point of care. So we want to uh, come up with a good user interface experience. Um, what we really want to focus on is participatory design from clinicians, because all these knowledge elements updates very um, quickly. Maybe they change the guideline later this year. Um, if it requires extensive programming skills, it's not gonna be scalable. So we kind of make the design that physicians should be able to update all their contents without technological expertise. So I'll skip this part because I'm running out of time. Um, so we are based on American College Gastrology Clinical Guideline for liver function test, and a lot of operationalizable elements such as um, whether when the moderate elevation of liver enzyme between five to 15 times upper normal limits. Um, you might consider this. Why don't you do this test? There are looks all operationalizable. I'll skip this part. 
um, when I was communicating with the development team, I came up with like mock-up interface for the app. So it was a kind of facilitating the process. So the architecture, uh, we built a mock fire server to test the cases uh, because we didn't have any access to fire ser other clinical fire servers. Um, Server-side application was built on Flask with on Python. Um, in interface experience elements built on HTML5 and JavaScript. Um, so that server-side application access to the Libre function test rules to read the rules, which was pretty much Excel sheets. It's just given to the clinicians. They just um, type the triggering rules, and then what knowledge element should pop up when certain triggers are met. For instance, ASDS and high LT, um, UPC line four, low four, um, their HG guidelines suggest ASD higher than ALT should be considered for alcoholic liver disease. And then all the reference URL. So um, I'll just go for a quick demo. Oop, when does this happen? Um. So um, you open the screen, and then there are, looks like two measures of the liver function test. Looking at the first one, it says that it's a cholesterol pattern based on the lab values. And then American College of Gastroenterology guidance suggests that the pattern is associated with cholesterol injury, which means that there is some obstruction or injury to the biliary duct. Um, ALP is elevated, um, associated with transaminitis. Um, the guidance is the light upper quadrant ultrasound for this patterns. We don't recommend that. I'm just telling that the guidelines say that. So I'm not really responsible for any consequences. <laughs> yeah, I, that's what I was worried about. So conjugate hyperbilirubinia, which associated with a certain disease, um, so on. And then you can click there on the reference. Right, so I don't have control on it. So you click the reference um, to see the actual guideline um, determined by American College of Gastroenterology, and you click the More button, and there's more of details about what uh, we are trying to say. A, um, the magnitude of labor chemistry um, based on the patterns is telling me that um, this must be cholesterol pattern um, based on the all the calculations, and then this pattern is typically related to certain disease. Um, yep. And then for this case, um, pattern is a little bit mixed. It's a little bit in gray zone. Um, ASD is a higher than ALT, which is typically related to alcoholic liver disease. Um, the ratio is more than three. To one, which is more indicates of indicative of alcoholic liver disease. So I'm pretty much done. Um, you are you are able to see that I'm not trying to give explicit explicit diagnosis. I'm just uh, trying to help clinicians to get informed enough to make better decisions. Um, so that rather than like enforcing doctors to do anything, I'm just trying. I was just trying to satisfy clinicians. Um, so that's pretty much about it. Um, so if there is any feedback or anything, you can just talk to me um, during the lunch um, and enjoy lunch. Thank you very much.